about new stuff. Oh, yeah, the music. The music. There it is. Oh, baby. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> so, look, Ma. You can only see me now. Oh. It gets me every time. Every time it gets me. It's so good. If you're not watching the YouTube channel, yeah. people, we're making a lot of mistakes in the early <laughs> oh, days. Oh, yeah, just laughing. In the early days of this podcast yeah. uh, and YouTube channel. But I just, I hope that you're you're able to bear with us as we <laughs> meander through some of these topics. It's more like bouncing. It's not meandering. <laughs> meandering implies, uh, you know, we'll go over here for a little bit. <laughs> we're just like, boom, hit that wall. Boom, hit that wall. Um, so, also, there's you know a couple tech hiccups. We had some audio that sounded funky. This audio, I hope, sounds better. We had video that was cutting in, cutting out. Yeah. So there's 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 work to be done on the tech side. That's understood. I think that's that's a known. The question this is this is a skill, and we're constantly evolving our skill. Absolutely. And and does the engine run, <laughs> Miles? <laughs> yeah. So like, like we back. might have a a hum and a tick. We might have a dun 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 yeah, and yeah. one of the tires, but is the engine running? Yeah, Can yeah. we get from A to B? Right now, it might not be the most direct route. We're not. We're not it at might like be the highest luxury speed. German sedan level. No, no, no. But so did this intro okay. set the stage? I mean, you might have probably already seen it by the title of the yeah. podcast episode. But what are we talking about in this episode, Mom? <sighs> you know, we're going to talk about automobiles, cars, trucks, and and so the, there's a there's a lot of ways we can take a car conversation yeah my thought on this episode specifically is car ownership yeah rather than like let's talk about all the different types of cars which we might um but like let's talk about what it looks like to go from uh knowing how to drive a car a vehicle to maintaining uh upkeep to thinking about what's missing what could be better how how do I make it better? How do I, how do I choose a mechanic? Do are there some things I should do myself? <laughs> What's a mechanic? What's a mechanic? So the other day, <laughs> I've and never, part, I've never part, seen one. Heard of part one. of the reason why this uh, got pulled early into the into the I guess the season is I'm I'm technically due for either an oil change or a uh, some sort of a checkup. I have a, I have a super. I moved to Asheville, bought a Subaru. Go figure. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who would have guessed? Just it's called. It, it, you know, it's not painted camouflage, but it's Asheville camo. <laughs> it is right? Asheville camo. So uh, sure. we got a we got a, a Subaru, and <laughs> I um, own a Subaru as well. Recent go. purchase. I lived in Asheville for fourteen years. For uh, no, it was not for me. Welcome, yeah. welcome to Asheville, Miles. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank yeah. You. So I mean, we're we're due, and I said, you know, I got. I'm thinking I probably take you to the dealership, and you were, you Billy Madison. Yeah, that, that, me. <laughs> that's just like no. no promise <laughs> me you won't go to high school. So like, um, yeah. So I I I mentioned in past couple of episodes is just the idea. I think that you as a you learn, I learned what my parents knew, right? Yeah, and I learned yeah, yeah. to, probably, to yeah, treat things the way uh, my, my parents treated them. And sometimes you learn by recognizing, oh, that's not the right way to do it. And I don't know if I learned that about cars. And with cars specifically, you know, hey, we're from New Jersey. We know a guy. So yeah. we got a bunch of friends of the family that own, uh, you know, gas stations and garages. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so Carl or Chris or somebody... Could, would take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I us. got that. I got that. I can do that for you. Yeah. And then, you know, at the end of the day, it was hundred, hundreds of dollars every time that, that someone needed to take a look at something. And so... <laughs> Maybe I need to be a mechanic up in New Jersey. So I don't, I don't exactly... I don't... I'm not overly mechanically inclined. I yeah. do like to pay attention. I'm very interested in learning more. Um, but I, we mentioned in one of the episodes, I saw a guy with a hammer hammering what looked like his break the other day and i said to myself whoa sometimes the rotors just don't come off it just happens so well, right, let me let me ask me. i want to start with this with a question are you a car person and by a car person why did you purchase the automobile well and that's a, that's a great up. question so purchase or, or leasing is completely separate option or separate discussion about you know if you should lease a car or you purchase a car most Heard. of the time when you i've never leased i've always bought okay. so if you lease, what I understand is all the maintenance is included. Interesting. And um, uh, if you know you purchase, you get a warranty. I've I've never had a car with a warranty. 
Huh. Yeah, never in my life. Okay. So. And so uh, probably part of my fear of a dealer. Uh, but I want... I, I'm. I buy my automobiles very specifically. Like yeah. I'm looking for a, like I own three old cars and they were very specific model years with very specific engines with very specific uh, transmission combinations because the, that is what I'm looking for. Like if, if my, my, they're all diesels, I'm a huge diesel fan, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but I'm looking for a specific engine transmission and automobile because they're easy to work on they have great longevity and i'm curious when you purchase an automobile what like why did you purchase a subaru perfect uh <laughs> so am i a car guy i i'm an aesthetics okay guy all right so uh, there are cars that i think are handsome mm -hmm. there are cars i think are beautiful and then there are cars i'm like how did what was the why does it look <laughs> like it does mm -hmm. um and and then i'm also a uh safety security okay logic thinker so that tells me that's that's what i need to know yeah so when i when when we looked at when we moved to Asheville, it became clear that we would need to buy a car um sarah prioritized it very heavily i said well if you think about it like let's we could spend a couple months Ubering everywhere, assess how much it costs for us to live a life where we yeah. Uber everywhere and yeah. then run the numbers and see well, what would a car payment look like and what you know how much is insurance. And there's a world where we're only spending $230 a month on Ubers and we would be spending 360 on a car and we, we you with, know. Yeah, with no maintenance issues, no, yeah. That's how my brain kind of goes. Rent a car goes. when you need to go out of town. Rent a car when you, so like I was thinking about it where like let's, we could, run some numbers and see what actually makes sense for our life. Um, and it became clear that that's just like not, wasn't a priority. Priority was buying a car. So I said, okay, Sarah, help me help us. What do you care about yeah. when it comes to buying a car? And she said, I want it to be safe. And I said, hurt. Okay. Uh, and so we have a Subaru Crosstrek it is, you know, I grew up um, lucky enough. My parents uh, purchased a 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Mm, um, yeah. And that's what, that's the only car that has ever been mine with air quotes. Okay. Treat, treated me well enough. Um, loved it. So I'm used to. Was that your first car? First and only. Oh, wow. That's, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. First and only. And so, I mean, after. Wow. After 2000. 12 i pretty much moved to new york and or was tra you know traveling in europe and didn't bring the car into new york and didn't so like my and then my parents needed the car so it was theirs again but from whatever that might have been 2005 to 2012 okay. that was my only car that i've ever had so i'm i'm i like suvs i like a little extra height on on the road um for impact things it sounds okay. like a smarter place to be than necessarily low don't know if that's scientifically true um, but don't love sedan heights okay. necessarily. Yeah. Uh, oncoming traffic. I wear glasses or contacts at night. Like I'd rather be just a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, and then also we're like, oh, we're going to be in Asheville. Maybe we'll want to go into the wilderness with this vehicle. <laughs> and yeah. so having a little extra clearance made sense. And so, um, she said safe. I know that we're in you know, what might be the Mecca of, of Outback and Subaru, uh, the local Subaru dealership is one of the largest. It, it's I've I've heard it is for sure the largest in the East Coast. It I've heard it's one of the largest in the U.S. Makes by sense. volume. You you can't. They say you can't throw a yoga instructor without hitting a like a Subaru bumper in Asheville. Uh, it's true. It's true. My in my neighborhood, my neighbor has two of the exact same model, just different colors. There you go. Anyway, so I was either going to be a Forester, which I thought was probably more than we needed, like because we don't have. I'm I'm hate. I'm going to hate to interrupt you, but I'm going to tell yeah. you that I made a bad choice. No, because it's neither good You're, or bad. No, 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 no. I won't. I'm you might it. not be a car guy. I'm not. I don't think I am. I don't think you are, because you haven't once said anything so, about yeah, like horsepower. No, no, no. Well, not even that. Just like. People who are car people, like their car is their extension of them. 
They I, buy I, a Subaru I th- because of the racing history, the rally sport, no, the, no, no, the no. idea of that. Crosstrack is is a uh, is. It's a, uh, no, Crosstrack's great. I got a buddy. I like the, they're amazing. They get great mileage. There's a ton of room. They're all wheel drive. So there you go. So e- extension to me, it's all wheel all the time, which I find is interesting. Yeah, and it's not a true SUV, and it's not a sedan. I am. I sit in none of the boxes. Yeah. Like I, I'm, you bought a great brand. You bought a great model of the brand. And so it's a 2017. So yeah. it still had the initial three year, 36,000 okay. uh, warranty. I try, I mean, I try to be safe. Bank technically owns it. We got 15,000 yeah. left, but like, could, if we needed to or wanted to, we could technically yeah. pay it off. But like, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'd love to talk about buying a car. And buying a car yeah, I just a bought one six months ago. Yeah, at a dealership. First, first car, uh, second car I've ever purchased from a dealership. Bunch of things, good, bad, and ugly in the car buying process that I find interesting, and some of it is the gray space around the loan, and then how much uh, is the have car you, you know, Have you ever worked in a sales like capacity at a dealership or anything like that? Oh, not at a dealership. Uh, I it's, worked at a motorcycle dealership in so graduate you, school. I imagine you have to know something because they it's, were it's like, so funny. you know, they were trying to get us to do a bunch of these warranty yeah, extension, yeah, yeah, tire yeah, to yeah, nose yeah, to t- yeah. And I was like, yeah, but it seems like warranty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, I got the call on the way to go pick it up in Louisville. I was like, Hey, do you want to get the warranty for the car keys? And I was like, I'm like, well, how much does a car key cost? And they're like 600 bucks. And I was like, I'm sorry, how much does it cost? Or four, something insane. Yeah. They're like, well, you got to program it. I'm like, Mm. that's why you don't buy stuff from a dealership. How many hours does it take to program a key? (laughs) What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, um, there's a bunch. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't pretend to say that I'm a car guy. Okay. But I do think that the Subaru Crosstrack, I have no idea of the Subaru's history. Safe. Reliable. I like those two things. Yep. Not a uh, hunkin SUV and not a sedan. I like those two things. Yeah. And I understand that it's less sporty than a sedan, and I understand that it's less yeah, able they, to do uh, yeah. outdoors things as uh, as called the uh, the Outback. But it's got decent clearance. It'll do anything you want it to do. So. I, I haven't asked more of it yet than it was able to provide. Well, so, uh, so yeah, the 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 uh, an automobile to me is an is an extension, extension of me. And so you are diesel. Like I, I, I buy. <laughs> I I grew up driving. Uh, I've had a number of automobiles, a lot of them diesel, and uh, families had diesels, and so it's it's just one of those things. There, once you make that switch, for some reason, it gets a hold a hold of you, and you never go back to, from diesel? To diesel. Yeah, to diesel. Okay. And so, uh, modern day diesels are great. I don't think, historically speaking, um, diesel engines were super dirty, super loud super obnoxious they were mostly for heavy farm equipment yeah the diesel diesel fuel is a byproduct of making gasoline so it was always cheaper huh. um diesel engines have less m- moving parts well they don't have an ignition system so there's no spark plugs there's yeah. no timing uh in the traditional sense so they're just they're mechan- they're almost they were fully mechanical longer than the um uh, gasoline engine before electronics uh, got tied into everything, so they stayed mechanical longer. So you, you know, you can you can buy parts and and work on them y- yourself easier. Uh, diesels, diesel automobiles typically got better mileage than their gasoline counterparts, yeah. and so in Europe you would find lots of diesels uh, everywhere. Yeah, with tons of miles on. And, and again, because of how a diesel engine is is designed and runs compared to a gasoline engine, it's typically much lower RPMs, mm-hmm. um, the which is less stress on the engine, so the engines typically last longer. And it's not as hot. I understand, like, cause yeah, it's they, like expl- like a regular engine is explosions. Well, so every 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 internal combustion engine works on basically the same principle, and this is two strokes too. You you suck in air and gasoline, you squeeze it, you ignite it somehow, and then that explosion drives a piston down. So it sucks, squeeze, bang, go, huh. and so. Uh, you hearing this? Yeah, it's crazy, right? And okay. so a gasoline engine uses spark plugs to ignite the combustion. So you bring in uh, you bring in the fuel, you bring in the air at a certain ratio, and when everything's compressed at the top of the cylinder, the spark plug ignites and causes that combustion 
that explosion. It's just a, it's, it's a controlled explosion. You're just you're driving around a bomb basically, mm-hmm. uh, and it drives that piston down and that turns the crankshaft. Diesel engine works by compression to ignite. So if you the, the idea is if you take something and you squeeze it tight enough, the molecules will rub together fast enough to self ignite. And so you don't need the spark plug. You don't need timing to of that uh, spark. And so because of that, uh, diesel engines, when you fuel them, you fuel them at a different rate. So there's less fuel in the cylinder to ignite uh, because there is a minimum threshold of a mixture ratio before. Like if you ever tried to start a gas grill and there wasn't like enough gas coming out, it just wouldn't, it would just kind of, you know, mm-hmm. or if you get too much and just woof. So diesel engines, you can, will combust with very, very, very little fuel. And so they run cooler because of that and get a little bit better mileage because of that. When I grew up, my grandpa, uh, so it was probably the early 90s, so he, it had to be an 80s Mercedes oh, with, yeah. with diesel. and uh, OEM 606 engine, I think. And a, and a uh, straight six. He had a, he had a cell phone in it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. 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 Back in the day that was, it was so nuts. We were like, what is this? Like, how do you have a phone? Is there a line that the, connects us to these young kids these days? They don't remember that. Uh, but yeah. So but, yeah. So my, my, for context, my grandfather's, uh, owned a owner, owner operator trucking company. Okay. And so he's, he's a huge diesel guy. He's, yeah. He's been saying stuff about diesel that I never understood since I was yeah. a kid. Uh, literally has put millions of miles on engines of trucks. And oh, for sure. Yeah. Over the road tractors, a million miles for them is nothing. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands on multiple yep. vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. I don't own an automobile with less than 250,000 miles on it. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> all of, and they all run like sewing machines. I'd hop in all of Well, except for the water pump I had to replace on my truck. Uh, so Wednesday, when Miles said that the other day, I was like, I'm sorry. Water pump? Yeah. I I, pump. I, I'm, he didn't I'm, know there was I tr- water. I tracked with you with oil. I tracked yeah. on gas. You tell me it's water. Technically antifreeze. It's antifreeze. distilled so it's, water. It's a coolant. Yeah, things. mixed with uh, some type of glycol to raise and lower the boiling and freezing temperature. But mm. uh, but yeah, so it's I'm, I'm a specific. I, I drive very specific automobiles for uh, just because I enjoy working on them and I keep them running. And uh, and modern diesels like. One of the greatest fears I live with every day is one of my cars will get totaled because I can't replace it. They're they're very, very specific models that were made in very small numbers, and the people that own them own them for those same reasons that I do, and they ain't selling them. Mm. And so, like, uh, my, my 2003 is a Ford Excursion. It's a big SUV. Uh, it has a 7.3 liter diesel engine. It was the last year of that engine. It was the uh, middle run of the excursions. They were only made from 2000 and 2005. Uh, yes, the, the gasoline motor, the 5.4 and the V10 got like eight miles to the gallon in the city. The diesel versions got 18. In the city? Uh, well, no, they'll, they'll get 16, 15, 16 in the city. Oh, wow. For a 8,000 pound automobile hauling seven people around and all their stuff. So you start talking about, you know, you take a road trip and you've got to haul seven people and all their stuff. You're taking two cars, you're taking one. What's more environmentally responsible? So I see you, Miles. And so <laughs> okay. that, that's, the, you know, you, you can justify anything. Yeah, but, I'm with you. So one of my biggest fears is that car gets totaled. Yeah. Because I can't replace it. And to me, that is the perfect automobile. It will haul uh, seven people. It's four-wheel drive. It gets great mileage. It will tow a 20,000-pound trailer. It, it'll do it, it's it's every and it runs off of waste vegetable oil and so um well that's a whole separate yeah way i did that for years all my diesels a- actually so i've yeah. heard that's a thing yeah but i made biodiesel and ran off of waste vegetable oil yeah and so uh but yeah so that people who talk i guess like i talk about and have these really weird quirks yeah. those are mostly those are car people those are car people or people who have a decent amount of money and are buying very special. I have I have a good friend who is into Porsches, and he owns some very unique modern Porsches. Mm. So, um, but I will say this: like going back to like if if any one of my three automobiles, I have a 03 Ford Excursion diesel, a 1998 E300 turbo diesel, is a Mercedes, and then a Mercedes 05 E320 diesel. Are they both sedans? The last two? The last two are sedans. Yeah, and. Um, uh, very, a couple of reasons why I own those two specific ones, but that's beside the point. 
I couldn't in good conscience buy a modern day diesel because the price premium is through the roof. The, really? Yeah, the modern day gasoline engines have gotten so good in their mileage um, that there's really not the benefit of the only time you want to drive a diesel for money reasons is if you have a large truck and you're pulling a trailer, you'll get better mileage long term. You'll get better performance for for heavy loads. But for passenger cars, that that gap use is just shrunk to nothing. Mm -hmm. And the cost of diesel fuel now is more than um, the cheapest gasoline. I remember when diesel was 40 cents, 50 cents a gallon cheaper than the cheapest, wow. um, regular gasoline. So that, that is like for, for modern, modern engines are very, very complicated. Like m most of the new German sedans don't even have dipsticks to check your oil. Mm. You have to go through a, the menu on the dash to do it. Which is crazy to me. Seems like a lot of failure. Yeah, points. like, it, and so the the ninety eight Mercedes was built for the common man. You can take, you can disassemble everything in that car down to the window motor, the 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 motor that makes the window go up and down if it strips out. You can pull that out of the door, and it has little Allen head uh, bolts that you take off, and you can buy that specific plastic piece. Hmm. Put it back, put it back together, put it in. In modern cars, you can't do that. You have to buy the whole regulator. That plastic piece will cost ten bucks. You have to buy the whole motor, and it costs a couple hundred. So miles. So how does one get started? Because where where we sit are on pretty far extremes. Then well, uh, so I, I yeah 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 yeah. So um, YouTube. Lots and lots and lots of YouTube. Do you watch uh, Scotty's Garage? No, I don't. I, I did. Well, I will say this. I grew up watching videos like that or stuff like that on TV just to see, okay. uh, oh, these guys are tricking out four Broncos or doing whatever. So, so uh, this guy, so Scotty, the, uh, Scotty Kilmer, I want to say his name is. He's this guy in Texas. I want to say Houston. Okay. He wears these little funny, like, John Lennon glasses, sunglasses <laughs> glasses. Okay. And he's just a wild man, and he's he does these like looks like self filmed multi camera okay. shoots about very specific stuff. But now he's also like a lot of it's clickbaity on the headlines and okay. stuff. Okay, but he is this mechanic, he, and he knows seemingly, and none of you know it. It might all it be it impresses lies. you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to know if any of it's real. But he's <laughs> the target like, audience. It really know, impresses. He's like I've. Yeah. You know, I've worked on these, like, you, this is trash, you don't want to get on any of these, but like, you know, in the 98 had the 7.3 liter, yeah. he's like, if you're going to go on the, di go, grab the diesel from the 20, and oh, so like. Oh, I know that dude. And he's nuts. Is he like, like Shaggy, yeah, and he's shaggy doing in his driveway? driveway? Yes, I know that guy. They're yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The he's awesome. Are, are, yeah, he's are, ragging on, he's like, do n he's like, <laughs> never under any circumstance buy a used Land Rover, <laughs> ever. Interesting. Ever. And I highly recommend, don't ever, you got to own three. One to drive, one to keep in the shop, and one to rob parts off of. How interesting. Good so, to know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, I would say if, if I guess I asked the question, that, are you a car guy? No. A car person. No one's yeah. to the guy. But if you're a car person, uh, you have the desire to either tinker with or know more about your automobile. Some people just want to, my wife, for example, like when turn the key on, like I like I, I wrote in this sales ad for the minivan. She's a driver in every sense of the word. Yeah, she just wants to turn the key and drive. She doesn't. She's like, hey, it was making some noise in the back, and I'm like, ah, oh, tires flat. So, um, so she's just a driver. Yeah, she so doesn't. I, I would say I would say that there are three steps that you described. Okay, driver, yeah. interested, yeah, sort of in learning okay. more, and then enthusiast. Uh, like enthusiast. Yeah. I'm in the interested. Mode. Okay, so like I. When I approach the car, I'm like looking at the tires. I'm seeing, did anything happen? Like, yeah. I, when I turn it on, I'm, I'm listening. Yep. I'm, but like at the same token, I know that our car has a sketchy battery. Okay. So like if we, I idled, I like put the put the battery on and just like let the radio play. Yeah. It's like four minutes in the, in the and car, the battery died. Battery died. Ah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so the charges that it puts out when, when you when you know AAA test it, or when the the people that whatever it is Amco did our last oil change, um, they were like, "Hey, your battery's throwing low numbers." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's driving fine. It's starting fine." That's your alternator. That's not your battery. Oh, dang. Yeah. So no, your alternator's fine. Your battery is what starts your car. 
Yeah. And that's so, it. Once so, the car started, the alternator gen- generates enough power to, to just keep going. To keep going. And recharge the battery. But batteries, like in your cell phone, lose efficiency. And maybe it's only charging to 20%. Yeah. So you're lucky you've got a small engine. It doesn't take a whole lot of juice. My excursion has two batteries. Two, just to start? Two batteries this big. What? Yeah. Sounds like a lot. So, yeah. So we I've hedged. I'm like, how much is it? Like, guys, like, I have 150 bucks and I'll, we'll fix it for you. And I was like, is it like, is that a special price? Is that, <laughs> is it always 150 bucks? Cause like, yeah. if it's, if that's not like some get it while it's hot price, then I don't know because yeah. I, I can call you. You'll come jump it. Also, yeah. I just bought a, uh, a jumper that is this big. Yeah. 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 Those things are, yeah. I, 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 I highly got, recommend for everyone to purchase one of those. Keep them I got, in the automobile. It's, it's for the size. So I did the ratio. So, th- so I'm, interested for yep. the size of our engine yep on a full charge in this thing yep. i could jump it seven times wow without recharging this but here is the problem with that talk to me you're overworking your alternator because your alternator uh when you crank up your car mm-hmm. when, when you when you get in you turn the key on and you crank it up uh it is using 100 percent of the battery to turn the starter to fire the engine up and so that's a very high amp um, use so the battery gets drained down your alternator once the engine is running the alternator is putting power out to run the car but then run back to the alternator to recharge it run back to the battery and so it's it. putting it out at, at the, the voltage regulator you know it's putting it out at a very high level to recharge the battery the uh if the battery is never getting recharged or not holding the charge it means the alternator is having to work Constantly working at a higher level and i imagine the downside risk of a broken battery versus a broken alternator you'd rather the battery go than it the depends alternator. honestly it depends like uh i would rather change an alternator. well I, I, yeah eh? well i would rather change the alternator on my truck because ah. i get it from o'reilly's auto parts and oh, they have a lifetime oh, oh. warranty okay. and it's three bolts i pop the serpentine belt off it's three bolts if i had to change the alternator on my mercedes benz i would be a little upset okay because it's not at the top of the engine, easily accessible. It's at the bottom. I got to do a bunch of other stuff. In general, yes, you want to replace your battery before an alternator. Okay. But I think it's uh, one of those things where if 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 you're the type of person it sounds like is you, uh, the, the person you would describe yourself as in general is probably going to own a more modern car. Someone who probably doesn't know a whole lot isn't going to... You buy uh, something that takes a ton of work unless financial situations dictate. Yeah. And so, uh, but I would say, yes, you need to start with, there's nothing wrong with learning to uh, change your battery, refill your washer fluid, change your oil, look at your radiator fluid, power steering fluid, brake fluid, tire pressure. Learn with, those are all the places you just want to start. Could you say that list again? So it's, uh, uh, so battery. Okay. So know where the battery's at. In general, uh, the battery has two terminals yep. and something that holds it down. So if you had to change that, and sometimes if you go to like O'Reilly's Advanced, any of these national change, they'll change the battery for you. Interesting. Especially if you ask real nice. Um, so battery. Um, all right. So and then we, fluids. It's yeah. So like. battery and then your oil level. Your which is the stick. Pull it yep. out. Wipe it. Push it in. Yep. And then you're looking for length and cruddiness. Uh, basically, so there'll be uh, there'll be a low limit and a high limit mark, okay. and you want it between. So in your Subaru, there's two dots. Mm-hmm. You want it between the two dots. You want to check it while your engine is warm, but not running. Hot. So you want to check it uh, after you've driven around for a while. Turn it off. Let it set for a couple of minutes, so all the oil drains back to the bottom. Check it. Uh, power steering fluids usually the same same way. You open it up and you pull the cap off, and there'll be on the side of the plastic container. It will say minimum and maximum on the side of the reservoir. Huh. Brake fluid same usually has the same deal. Uh, radiator fluid same. All th- I mean radiator less, but the last two sound very important to have. <laughs> you sound like you definitely <laughs> yeah, yeah, want they're power okay. Steering. You get you. you <laughs> it depends power on the size of your tires. When the power steering goes out in my truck. It's a very different matter than the power <laughs> steering in my uh, car. But the power steering in my truck is tied to my brakes. So if my power steering goes out, I lose power brakes. Holy smokes! And that's people. a that's a whole separate thing. Okay. But so I will say, in your Subaru, if you pop the hood, everything yellow is something that you can check. Mm. And so uh, a lot of manufacturers have moved to that, which is great. Smart. Um, and then, uh, so brake fluid, power steering fluid, radiator fluid, battery, air in your tires, um, also air filter. 
So I, 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 it took a little hunting. I found the air filter. Yeah, yeah. and time. all of this will be available in your owner's manual. Yes. Or YouTube. You can just find. For yeah. Sure. Uh, the Subaru, there's a Mr. Subaru guy. He's a Mr. Subaru. He's in South Carolina. He does a good job about his cool. stuff on YouTube. Yeah. They um, were like, do you want a new filter? And I was like, uh, so it's one of those things. They, they show it to you. Do yeah. you want a new filter? And I'm like, I don't know what a clean, that looks pretty clean to me. I mean, like there's <laughs> clearly some dust yeah, on yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. like, what yeah. is a clean yeah. filter meant to look like? Yeah. How, can you show me? A, a bad, bad filter? Mm -hmm. Can you show me a good filter? And then yeah. I'll make some sort of rational judgment. Yeah. And I, what, it, I don't want to say it's predatory, but there are certain places that are, are oh, for, for sure. sure predatory. Yeah. The thing yeah. is like... You want the transmission flush for I don't $300? Like the, I, toilets flush. I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? What does it mean yeah. to flush a transmission? Yeah. I've never heard of anyone. In, so like there, there are certain things where it... it it's hard, and I'm constantly thinking about like sales and negotiation. I'm. It's hard to negotiate. Yeah. It's hard to have a footing to stand on yeah. when you actually don't know what people are talking about. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes, I completely agree that this is so far out of the realm, and that's my. I mean, that's my wife. She calls me when, and she's like, "Here, you talk to the guy." If like, if she's getting her oil changed somewhere. Yeah. So and I mean, so like I, I I got here and I was like, all right. So it says that we need to do the oil every uh, three months. I was like, let me look at where we can get our oil changed. Yeah. And you le read all the descriptions and whether or not. So first of all, if you're leaving a Google review, people like consider the brand that you're reviewing. And if it's a small business, if it's a restaurant, be kind. Yeah. Be yeah, kind because it, those it makes a difference. Real. If it's triple, if it's uh, if it's Amco, say what you got to say. And so there were a bunch of people who were like, "Hey, listen, I'm not sure if it's just one guy. I'm not sure if it's a whole business, but like my kid went here and it felt like they got scammed. They, there's a bunch of extra stuff on the charges, and yeah. none of it was necessary. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm that guy's kid. Like I feel like I'm gonna go in with the same. I'm 20. I don't know yeah. which way is what, and I could get taken advantage of. So I. Often we'll say no. Like I, when we bought the the Subaru, there's a million other things that they were trying to sell us, and I was like, ah, uh, no. Yeah. Like I just it's a I, undercarriage coating. I don't know, and you're not. And I was like, if here's the thing, if you can explain it to me, mm -hmm. and I'm tracking with you, maybe yes. Yeah. If you tell me this is what most people do, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. no. No, that's a good. That's probably a good litmus test if you can understand because automobiles are easy. I mean, they're mechanical objects. They're designed to be as simple as possible. Well, depends. There have been some very complicated <laughs> engines in the world, but uh, yeah, it, it is. It's a it's a scary thing to sit across from someone. They're like, you know, it's time for your transmission fluid to be flushed. Do you want that to happen? Do you want you want the power flush? You want the regular flush? Bro, do, I don't do you know. Just tire, want you want it? tire shine? Like I'm like yeah. I. Think I want, why would I? Why do tires need to shine again? Like there are just there are so many parts of this, and I and I'm and I'm with you. And so, if, I will say there's the opposite side of the coin. There are transmissions that are considered sealed for life that shouldn't that the manufacturer of the transmission of the automobile has said you never need to change the fluid in this, and that is wrong. That has been proven to be wrong, way after the limits of warranty have expired on the automobile. So is then is the the name of the game. So one of the things we we point back to the motorcycles episode, and the thing that I thought about, or the thing that we said towards the end of the episode, which was, um, so you're thinking about getting a motorcycle. What might make sense to pay attention to? I said I'm prioritizing because I don't want to be a wrench turner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm prioritizing fuel injection and and I like brakes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is there something like that in cars? <laughs> Power windows, <laughs> right? Like, uh, what, what things well, are I'm, indications that, like, is it just the brand? Is it what dealerships are local to you? Like, how, how right, would we're you... We're going to paint with some broad brushes. Yeah, here. have to. All right, so most <laughs> of your automobiles for the masses, Toyota Camrys, Honda Accords, Civics, four-door sedans, Japanese manufacturers, in general, those types of cars are going to be pretty simple. They're going to be, uh, because again, the more things you add to a car, uh, the more expensive it gets. 
those are much less temperamental for long-term maintenance, much less uh, quirky and their ownership than German luxury sedan, than some of the specialty, uh, even like uh, even some of the like Lexus, uh, Acura, and some of the things like uh, that they put like you know Land Cruisers are made by Toyota and those things are designed to last 300,000 miles. Like mm -hmm. they, they are over engineered to, to last forever. A Land Rover looks kind of the same. Yeah. Don't ever own a Land Rover out of warranty ever, ever. Land Cruiser, Land Cruiser, Toyota, Land Rover, Land Rover is Land Rover. Not good. And so I, I personally, I would never own a new BMW, Mercedes, um, uh, any uh, any of the other European because it's brands prohibitively expensive outside to of warranty, yeah. Because they, they, you know, the the braking systems, you know, you can't just Audi, all those, you just can't, uh, uh, you know, to get new brakes and rotors on the front of a Audi A4, which is just their lowest model sedan, it's like twelve hundred bucks. Well, and so you buy a car. You know that it, that drives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might, right. Be. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, and drives. so, but you, you have, and so, but if you own it new and it's got the warranty and you're buying a new car every three years, does it matter? Yeah. And so, or if you're leasing and everything's taken care of, does it matter? And, uh, so you have to, you have to understand what's your kind of investment horizon. If you're going to buy this car and you're going to have it until the literal wheels fall off, then if you open up the service manual in the automobile, the, there's going to be a, a grid and there's going to be all these different services on the top, and there's going to be the mileage listed on the left. And you just, you know, have a dot on what's recommended when. Hmm. Follow that. Just follow that. People, seems so simple. And if you want to follow that and do it yourself, there is a YouTube video for, for, sure. it, for everything. Um, I would say, uh, in general, uh, again, we're painting with broad brushes. Mm -hmm. If, if you are going to follow that maintenance chart and you take it to a dealer, the dealer would typically handle you a little better because they, they, they might think you're going to buy another car later from them because they don't want to sell you this car. They want to sell you your next car. Mm -hmm. um, They're trying to sell us next cars at the six month mark. We oh, absolutely. Getting. Like oh. every time, every time you take your car in for a service, and, uh, again, yeah. I'm going to paint with a broad, the, the, the high end, the high end uh, manufacturers are great at this. If you bring in your three series BMW to get service, they're going to give you a five as a loaner. Ha <laughs> ha. And now you're driving a five for a day. Mm. You're like, well, this is kind of nice. And they're like, hey, what'd you think about that five? It's pretty nice, right? You know, it's only about $100 more a month, and you could drive that thing too. <sighs> huh. Okay. Yeah. But um, so go, taking things to dealers. So, uh, dealership maintenance is kind of like where everyone starts. Uh, it's like work. I'm trying to think what would be an equivalent. It's like working for a large faceless corporation, get your feet underneath you work on a bunch of stuff, and then you go start your own shop somewhere else. Mm. And so dealers do great work. It's backed by the manufacturer. If they mess anything up, um, they typically will have the, most information about things for, for newer automobiles. Uh, so if there's any updates, they'll pick those up. Um, or, um, but they will be the most expensive for sure because for, for the maintenance, for the yeah, for them, for the maintenance, for everything. If it's not included as part of the warranty, uh, again, if it's warranty, it's all taken care of. It's free outside of that. I definitely recommend a small independent shop. So you drive by and if you drive like in Asheville, there are a number of Subarus. So you imagine there are a number of Subaru specific dealers. Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, there's a place on Biltmore called mostly, it used to be called mostly Toyotas because you'd call them up and say, Hey, we're, what do you work on? They're like, mostly Toyotas. That's a good name. And so, uh, that's what they work on. Um, and so yeah, find an independent shop. You can typically get the Google reviews. If they've got a ton of cars in the front yard, that's a good sign because th they're busy. Um, so if, if you want to, so if you, if 
if you want to maintain, uh, if you just want to have the dealer do everything, the dealer can do everything. It's yeah. going to cost you a whole lot more than if you take it to a small private shop. It's yeah. going to be probably... It, because you're, you're paying for the dealership's marketing campaigns. Oh, yeah, you're, you're paying, paying for their free all, water bottles. Yeah, you're paying for everything. You're paying for all Whereas, that. like, you know, Johnny's... Uh, Acme Co. Small business yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. mechanic You're shop. You're paying for his kids to go to ballet practice or something, yeah. and so it's uh, it. It, and so it will be probably a third cheaper, if not a half cheaper, wow. depending. Um, and usually those guys are pretty honest about it. They'll be like, "Hey, if this was my car, I would do this." Or, or but. Yeah. So you have to understand if you're going to keep your car forever, just just do everything that's in the the manufacturer's uh, specifications, mm-hmm. and you by the most the vast majority of things be just fine and never have a moment's trouble out of that yeah. car. So uh, things that even people who look and talk and walk like me, yeah, might benefit from having. We talked about the jumper. Like the self-contained oh, yeah, jumper yeah. Yep, cable yep. Mm-hmm. setup, so you don't need another you car. You don't need another car. Yeah. Um, I have, I have like a whole safety. So I'm like a preparedness will be a future episode. I have like a little medicine kit in the yep, car. Yep. I have a same fi- one you do for camping. You just keep it in the car. Fire extinguisher in the car, just cause. Yeah. Uh, and then a cars catch on fire. Cars catch on fire. And then I have a, a tourniquet in the car as part of the medic kit. And then I have a glass breaker that's yep. at hands reach. But like what things make sense for car owners to have? You said tire pressure thing. I don't have a tire pressure yeah. ga- uh, reader. That yeah. sounds like that would be a good next purchase. That is, yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I would say yes. So something to jump your car off if you're by yourself, stranded. Um, uh, tire pressure gauge. Glass breaker, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I don't think it I, sounds like it was a gift, but I'm like, you know what? It, it, I'm gonna keep it in the car. I'm gonna keep it in the glove yeah, box yeah, and have yeah. one next to me because you never know. Flashlight, flashlight. Uh, something like that. Uh, you, you know, most cell phones have flashlights on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, it, those those two basic. Uh, I'm trying to think. Really, I mean, if you're traveling in an environment where you're gonna, it, it's super cold outside. Bring a change of clothes. Bring a solar blanket. Bring some stuff Got because that. if your car breaks down on the side of the road. Um, I wish learn how to change a spare tire. That is probably like uh, I've got my oldest is taking driver's ed right now, uh-huh. and she knows the threshold. Like she can't leave in a car by herself unless she can, from walking out to the car, change a tire on the car. Hey, now I want to be a part of that class. Yeah, and so not, uh, no, I've, I've not changed a tire. with all the tools that come in the car. Yeah, and not not like all my shop tools. Got it. I think that. My lot, my my logic brain says, I think I get it. It doesn't sound like it would be. It's really not that hard. It can't just, be. But, but it's the doing it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I've watched, you know, I've watched enough. I've watched YouTube videos yeah. and stuff. But it's it's one of those things that, like, again, it's it's the intellectual understanding versus practically having done it are two often very very different things. Yes, for sure. So like you right. don't you don't rem- like. You see it in the video that, oh, yeah. you break the lug nuts while the tire is on the ground because if you lift it up and try to break the lug nuts, the tire's just going to spin. You're like, oh, yeah, I need to remember to do that. Yeah. But you don't remember it in the moment yeah. because you have no uh, just, you have no, no tactile experience yeah. with that. No uh, muscle memory in the in the yeah. context of it. I, I, one of the key things I watched in a video once, which sounded very smart to me, is putting the tire that you've just taken off under the car yes. in such a way yeah. so that if it falls, falls. it hits the yep. tire and not the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Would never have thought to. I would have gone, tire, boop, <laughs> boop, tossed it to yeah. the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it is. I mean, you're lifting a heavy a hif- heavy hunk of metal up in mm-hmm. the air. You definitely don't want it to fall. Okay, so uh, know how to change the tire. Yeah. Uh, and outside of that, if you want to learn, I would say the next thing you want to do is learn how to change your air filter, learn how to change your oil. Uh, again, power steering fluid, brake fluid, radiator fluid, transmission fluid, those aren't things you need to know how to mess with. Just if, monitor. Yeah, just monitor. Uh, those are the type of things that for someone who just wants to know enough about their car to understand it, just take it to a shop yeah. and have them do a, uh, do a power steering flush or uh, things like that. Do so. you have a... Um... The answer is probably yes. Plug it, plug it in, and get a re- code readout from yeah. the oh, car. Yeah, I have a few. I have one specific. And here's the other thing too: most modern, uh, some of the more modern cars, especially the luxury ones, 
you can't do anything to the car unless you own their twenty thousand dollar software that interfaces with the car. Because right. again, it doesn't have a dipstick. It doesn't. You can't check if I replace. So even in my 05 diesel, if I replace an injector, I have to take that car to the dealership to have that injector coded to that engine. Wow. Because for me to have the software to do that is a $20,000 investment. So it's, it's, but yes, I have, I have a, a number of them for different purposes. Interesting. So my, my understanding, and I don't know one from another, but Scotty does. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah, I watch yeah. these things. I know. He's he like, he's ah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, crazy yeah, I love that guy. And so yeah. you watch and he's like, use this. You, you could like, so when you buy a motorcycle, he's like any motorcycle made after 2005, he's got a yeah. thing, you plug it in and like, yeah. and you get the codes 98. Yeah. That's right, when so ODB2 you, was mandated. People, so yeah. you get this code reader and you're like, and it tells you it's good to go. Or it yeah. tells you that there's there's a like yeah. look and then you take your phone out and you Google what the code means. Yeah. And then yeah. you Oh, they know. have code readers now that interface with your phone. You can buy an app and then get a Bluetooth dongle. You know, mm -hmm. we love that word here. Dongles. Uh and you plug it into your OD uh, ODB two port and you just read on your phone and you can click on the code and it will tell you what it is. So, but in absence of that, any auto parts store will scan your codes for free. Just show up, walk in and say, Hey, I got a check engine light, tell me what it is. They won't reset it, but They'll scan it for you and tell you what it is. So just in case someone was tracking with us until we said that, yeah. one more time, there's software on all cars. Yes. So every modern okay. computerized car has uh, whatever system it is that controls the engine, whether it's propri proprietary to that manufacturer or not, is required to communicate to a technician or to the owner um, via uh, ODB2 is the name on board diagnostics to, I think is what it stands for, um, uh, is, is required to, is, is legislated and mandated to be a certain type of connector and the codes are to be given in a certain type of way that they are universally able to be read by anybody who owns or is servicing an automobile. Huh. Because this came about through legislation where uh, cars were making or manufacturers were making it where only that manufacturer could work on your car. You couldn't take it to uh, Johnny down the street. Yeah. You couldn't take it to, to a private shop. You couldn't even work on it as your, as yourself because wow. you didn't have. And so the uh, people recognize that as prohibitive. So, um, well, look at yeah. legislation Did doing something, something right. right. Doing something what right. do you know? Cool. Um, and so you can get that. And, and I yeah. hear that they're not not that expensive. Yeah. So the, the little Bluetooth dongles, like twenty bucks on Amazon. Torque, uh, uh, Torque, and Torque Pro are two softwares that most people use. They don't work for diesels the way that I need them to, mm -hmm. so I don't use them. Um, but uh, but yeah, those any there's a there's a bunch of them, and they'll you know you just plug it in, you hit scan code, and it'll say P twelve oh one or whatever. You click on it, and it'll tell you what it is. Wow. And then you get online and say, okay, well, is this good? Is this a bad code? Is it a really bad code? Or yeah. can I just hit reset? And you, then you walk into a dealership or you walk into the mechanics and you're like, hey, I'm getting a P whatever code mm -hmm. you just said. And they're like, okay, so this person isn't just a lame yeah. duck. Yeah. Like they've done some homework or they know what's going on. If, if you, yeah. uh, I wouldn't pretend to know what's going on. But I can definitely tell them that I've done a lot of Googling. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. and based on yeah. my understanding, here's what's going on. And, and, and I, I feel compelled to get one of those readers because while I don't have the intention or enthusiasm to ever actually, like, wrench on the car. Yeah, it, it I, empowers you. It is an empowerment thing. Yeah. And I do want most playing fields that I step onto, I want to feel like I have... Uh, at least an even one. Yeah, and that yeah that that's a that's a great because you can like you you can literally type in your make your model your year and that code hit enter and there is some forum somewhere dedicated to that automobile with information on how to move forward with that. So cool. So uh, another thought that I have is uh, stuff outside of cars. So one of the things that I'm very interested in in my little. Uh, outback is putting like a, a hitch of some sort yep, on it. Yep. Yep. Um, I've tried to Google it. It yeah. seems like it might be a process where you need a car lifted and like a full blown situation. I will say it depends on the automobile. Okay. So uh, Subarus are a little bit different. You can get um, the type of 
hitch that you just kind of have to push the exhaust to the side and bolt up. You can get the one like I got for hours where you take the rear bumper off and you bolt it to the, uh, the bumper fascia uh, behind it to the frame um, and then put it back on and all you see is a little square below which you have to trim. Uh, the minivan that I had to put on is literally like four bolts. You can do it laying in your driveway. Mm-hmm. So some cars are a little more complicated than others. So, uh, But U-Haul as a national chain does install Seen that. hitches. And uh, I've actually recommended them for a few of people who are uh, not like if, if you if you've got a hitch and it's four bolts to put it in, you just bring it over to the house and we'll knock it out. But if it's something that's a little more involved, I'll, you know, I'll say I'll do it. But if you know, for 120 bucks, so will you haul. Yeah. And you get a national warranty with it. So uh yeah, you you can you have to you have to just kind of displore explore your options. E trailer is a great website for stuff like that. That's where I so, I, I ended up finding yeah, myself. They're the they're the eight hundred pound gorilla. And in the space so yeah. it was like them or u-haul is what i found but i was like i don't yeah. understand what's going on with this u-haul thing is that am i renting it am i buying it <laughs> no you're buying it and they're uh, putting it on because they want to rent you the trailer the trailer that goes with it, it. Yeah. come on people yeah, that's man. smart that's smart business yeah right uh, i can't but, rent trailers to cars that can't pull trailers as, exactly and uh they're all selling you the same hitch there's probably three or four different manufacturers huh. that do things a little different uh and then rooftop stuff it, it, it seems like it my understanding recently is that it's less aerodynamic to put something on the roof than it is behind. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Because you, the 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 engineering went into what should the front of this car look like so that the yeah. drag coefficient, I'm making stuff up, no, drag no, coefficient right. is as yep. low as possible. Yep. And then you go ahead and you put a sail on the top of the on car. On the top of it, yeah. And you're like, Whoa. Yep, okay. exactly. So you put it behind. Uh, uh, the, I will never, ever do a bike rack on the roof of a car because at some point in time you will hit your Bridge. garage. Oh, garage. Yeah. Got it, got it. And so that not only damages your bike, it damages your car. So I'm a, I'm a big proponent of um, hitch-mounted bike racks Heard. So, for that reason. Anything else? Do, uh, uh, do you if ever... you're, well, I would say if you're interested in learning to work on your own stuff, which I highly recommend. It's empowering. It's, it's, it's cool. Uh, you can buy starter sets of tools. Yeah, there you go. That I know the the one I bought probably literal decades ago. Uh, Craftsman put it out, and it was like a little four drawer set. Got it at Sears, and it was just a little plastic container. But that's where you start, and then you add tools to it as you need throughout the years. Um, but I saw a picture of it the other day, and I was like, ah, oh, it's just bold new graphics. It's still the same kit, and so you can get something like that, and you can do probably. 80%, 90% of what you ever want to do on your automobile with that, hmm. with that tool set. So, and a good floor jack. That way you can change your own wheels. If you Floor jack. Yeah, one of the things, if you, if you can jack your car up and take the wheel off, you can do your own brakes. You can do your own rotors because... You, yeah, but you, is that something different than what you would jack your car up with if you're changing the tire. Yeah, the because street. usually that's a little small, like, and so wobbly. a floor, yeah, so a floor jack is the, you know, it's got four wheels, got a big pole, sticks out the back. The the ones that you're meant to use to change your tire in an emergency situation are just, you don't want to trust your life on that. Uh, I don't trust my life to floor jacks either. I jack them up and then I put jack stands underneath the car. Because hydraulics could squirt it, out. You never point. know. You just Got never it. know. Um, but if if you can get the car up and you can take the tires, five, usually five uh, lug nuts to get the wheel off, your caliper's only two. And it's I'm sitting saying, right there. Cal- and if you take the caliper off, <laughs> now you can change your brake pads and your rotor's right there. You can take the rotor off. I'm Googling caliper. Yeah. I'm Googling rotor. So, caliper is the part that when you press, press the brake pedal, it squeezes brake pads against the rotor. Got it. And so, uh, yeah. And so if you touch the brake pedal and you feel your steering wheel shake, hmm. that means you have a warped rotor. You can take, if you can get that rotor off, you can take it to, and I'm just going to use O'Reilly's because I use them all the time for 99% of everything. Oh, oh, oh. They can, oh, O'Reilly's, um, uh, auto park. <laughs> See, it's marketing. It's Jingle. great. They, they can great turn job. your rotors. They have machines to turn your rotors. And so you don't have to buy new rotors. They'll measure them if they're within spec. They can turn them, straighten them back out. You can put them back on, put new pads on. Hmm. And you can, you can even get lifetime pads at O'Reilly's where if you bring them back before they're touching metal, they'll give you new ones for free. You never have to pay for brake pads again. Tommy boys. I did that with Dad. the, with the water. I did that with the water pump. Yeah. I, I, 
I called up and I could not remember if I bought the water pump from them or another shop. I, I called uh, O'Reilly's on Riverside and I said, hey, here's the part number. Can you look through my uh, search for it? In my, I, They don't let me do that online for some reason. I don't know why. Do you have to call down to the store and say, here's the part number that have I ever purchased this? I went back and they said, yep, February 2012. Come on. Lifetime warranty. Ago, yeah. And here's the funny shit. Blew my mind. I took, so uh, I, you can either take the old one off, bring it, and they'll swap it out right there. I, I have some specialty pieces on mine that I needed to swap over. So I purchased front of the cash, got the new one, took it home, swap it out. The day next day, took it back to get refunded. When I purchased that water pump, it was $159 in, uh, in 2012. And when I bought it yesterday, or day before yesterday, it was 129 They refunded me $30 <laughs> from 12 or from eight years ago. This, Dude, I'm dead serious. This episode brought to you by O'Reilly's. O- o- O'Reilly's. Shout oh out to Ricky. Uh, uh, oh, Ricky Bobby down at uh, O'Reilly's is a friend of mine. That's amazing. I mean, I. But they do all kinds of lifetime parts like that. If you're going to keep your car. I almost have time. a hard time believing that that's true. That seems so excessively consumer friendly. No one keeps their cars. That makes that's sense. no one. Like m- most people don't know how to or yeah. don't want to work on their automobiles. They're yeah. getting a new one every three years when the warranty runs out yeah. or as soon as it hits 100,000 miles. And that's why uh, it's always mail-in $100 off warranties because no one does the Nobody. thing. Nobody, yeah. No and uh, so, like, my power steering pump, alternator, brake pads, water pump, shocks, like legitimate wear items, things that are meant to be replaced every 20,000 miles are lifetime warranty parts. I take the f- shocks and like, and not even like the, the bottom tier cheapest parts. So these are like really nice Rancho or Bilstein shocks that have lifetime warranties through O'Reilly that cost $150, $60 each. I pop them off after 20,000 miles and walk in and say, hey, these are gone. They go, here's your new ones. People, I don't, so that, that seems like, reason to learn a thing or two about how to turn a wrench around a car yeah for sure you can save yourself some money you can have some fun i've replaced brakes in apartment parking lots you can do it you might need a little pop-up in case the rain comes but uh but yeah you can do it anywhere you don't necessarily have to have um have to have a full-on garage yeah i mean the guy who i saw doing it also has this really old uh I want to say it's a Mercedes. It's often under a little tarp, but he, he turns wrenches on that as okay. well. So he, well, he he's it, mechanically inclined. Yeah, this guy. yeah, yeah. I, I I love to keep old things running, mm-hmm. and uh, I take care of them. And yeah, so I'm always working on something. It seems so. Well, um, any last parting bits of wisdom from your? Uh... Y- you can do it. You, you, I mean, legitimately, you can do it. You can learn. I learned how to do it. There's, yeah. I'm not like, I'm just a redneck from South Carolina, the backwoods of South Carolina. So. But I don't think that you're wrong. I got a cousin, uh, cousin Sebastian Mason, who is, when, I, when we were growing up, he was like the most mechanically inclined person that yeah. I knew. And the thing that he would always say something to the effect of, he goes, listen, Tom, the guys who you're going to have come over and like, fix your toilet are not just truly are not as smart as you are no right like they, they're not rocket they, scientists. they didn't like high school like yeah. and he was talking to me like i did great i was yeah. a good student he's like they are not as smart as you are they have paid attention in a specific they learned a skill craft, they learned to trade a trade yeah, yeah. He goes, if and they you, make a lot of money they make a lot of money way more money than me and he goes, if you ever want to learn those things, like if you don't want someone to come fix the toilet, you can learn how to do it. Yeah. And that's true. Like you may, you, you might not have the mental capacity to learn astrophysics. You, I promise, have the capacity to learn how to change your oil, change your air filter. And believe it. And change your brakes. Invent the system by which the brakes work? No. No, you, you don't need to. You just <laughs> need to know it. how to service it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, with that, episode, whatever this one is, seven, five, oh, man, six. Who knows? Uh, We're rolling. I want to say it's six. But uh, this episode has come to a, a grinding halt. <laughs> We're going to need to check your brake pads. But uh, if you enjoyed this episode, we have some of the notes oh, from yeah. the conversation yeah, on the yeah, website. We'll the website's pretty, like, check it hey, out, listen, man. people. We got all kind of stuff in It's there. slick. It's, it's, it, it, 
right now it's adding value yeah. above and beyond what we talked about in the episode. There's yeah. a little extra context. We, we can links. clarify all the places Miles was wrong. Absolutely. Um, we can normalize some of the places where, like, hey, it looks like the rest of the internet also doesn't know this thing that Tony doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and Yeah, you and, are not alone. And yeah. put, put some links uh, where relevant. So if you haven't checked out tellusmoreabout.com, please do. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon we're going to start sending some emails that uh, also are fun and interesting and worthwhile and are different than the episodes themselves. So exciting. If you listen only with your ears, uh, try to listen with your eyes on YouTube. Man. If you listen only with your eyes, try and listen with your ears on yeah. whatever podcast player you like. That's great. Like, subscribe. Smash. Smash. The, the, my, my son is YouTube watching. <laughs>